Mario, time to go, boys. You gotta want it. You gotta fucking need it. And you have to live it. No, go out here on the field and be the young man. I'm raising y'all to be. You got a character, you play to the whistle, and you ball the fuck out. Go win the damn game. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here's what happened. Watkins will run the toss, but as the third. And we're going to start at the 10-yard line. We've got four plays on offense to score. Ethan Grass, the ball carrier, chased out at about the five-yard line. Slosser's pass is complete to number seven, Aziz Baby, for the Watkins Mill touchdown. when the school opened, couldn't tell you the exact percentages of white to minority, but I'm guessing we were at least 60 or 65 percent white. They were still reaping the benefit of these affluent families and playing in the local uh, youth organizations around here and that just fed into Rockland's Mill. We had baseball championships, the school wasn't open that long, and they had a, a football state championship 93. Then the neighborhood's starting to turn over. Montgomery County has a, a, a great law. Every apartment complex or complex built has to have a section of it dedicated to Section 8 housing or HOC. The hood is no longer the hood. The hood is in the suburbs now because of gentrification. They built these cities up where they used to be crime infested and poverty stricken. They built these places up and those people that used to live there can no longer live there. So what happens is they have to move. Where do they move to? The suburbs, because the suburbs have this whole law, especially in Montgomery County, that they have to provide HOC, they have to provide Section 8 housing. Since 1989 to now, I think we've gone to 8% white and 92% minority of some kind. We're fifth in line for uh, free and reduced. There's four other schools that are poorer than we are which people are amazed by because we're an up county school. Um, but we've struggled with poverty and poverty brings issues when it comes to education. If you don't have cleats, you're gonna run up here. This is the last place that most people wanna be. Um, that is the rep that we have. Um, we're called anywhere from Gangsters to thugs to criminals. I mean, that's what they think. Um, you have schools that are afraid to come here for a game. 
we get that rep because of what may go, what may be happening in the community, which is not fair here in the building. It's not fair. Um, but things happen everywhere in, a, in all kinds of communities. We just happen to be on the news about it. We decided to make a stand as a school and as a football program. And um, at the start of our season, we took a knee to the national anthem to raise awareness for what's going on in our communities. And we had a lot of backlash. That was kind of a um, trickle down from Colin Kaepernick. You know, we saw him taking a knee. And Just like Colin Kaepernick of the 49ers. Most of the threats are coming from adults. I think that's childish of them. Principal Carol Goldman has received dozens of emails in support and against the protest. One tweet told players there will be a price to pay on my field. I remember lots of people outside of the school being upset by that. That didn't sit well with the host school. If that was my child kneeling on the field, we'd have a serious problem at home. If you're gonna kneel, I don't think you should be allowed to play. There's definitely other ways to protest. The flag is not a racial flag. It all became about disrespecting the national anthem, the flag, the military, and that had nothing to do with feel as if we're being disrespectful. Um, the public sees it as um, we're being defiant. This peaceful gesture was not designed to hurt or disrespect or offend any individual or group, specifically our veterans and our police officers. It's disrespectful to the veterans and, I mean, you look at all the veterans that have died and fought, there's no distinguishing color. So I called my son, who's a captain in the Army. I called him, I said, Jimmy, what do you think about all this? He said, Dad, we fight so that people in America can protest the way that they want to protest. He said, I think the kids are showing good leadership. I congratulate you for taking a stand for social justice as a high school student. It's making a difference. I say, if, if you offend one or a million people, um, but it saves one life, it makes uh, a police officer think twice about killing a young minority, and it's totally worth it. But the two things I can't control is what? Anybody? My attitude and what? And my effort. Those two things I wake up every morning I can control. Yeah, I can be pissed off or upset, but I need to breathe and control my attitude and control my effort. If those two things you can't control and I don't get your, your best effort and your best attitude, no matter if you're in ninth grade or 12th grade, you will not play for this program. Is that clear? Yes, sir. There'll be two sessions. Session one, lunch, session two. They, they test them. They did a 40, they did a short shuttle, they did the cone drill, they did a broad jump, they did the vertical, all these different things. We'll warm them up, test them, um, go to lunch, come back, and then we'll split them up into individual. So offensive linemen, you're going with Coach Miller. Linebackers, you're going, going with uh, Steve and Rod, DBs, YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Running back, receiver, Paul, D line, quarterback. I'm tired of Gatesburg. We gonna whoop they ass because of today. Sir. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We so, gonna... in general, for years, uh, there's been a reputation that this is a ghetto school. We're working on changing the reputation that we have, but it's it's a bad. <laughs> This, this is the thing trying for our kids with the single single moms, this and that, they're not used to the word. And I tell them the word discipline. And discipline is not a bad word. It's just a realignment. And they're not used to a male figure. Huh? A male figure. Positive, Positive male figure. Positive male figure. There you go, right. People Older say, uh, Watkins Mill is poor. You know, we got a high farms rate. You know, you see these stats and you're like, is it really that bad? I'm like, anybody living in Montgomery County or whatever, we're still one of the richest counties in the nation. But when you really get to know some of these kids and get involved with some of their lives, we got some kids that are struggling. 
Hey guys, um, I'm Ava Butler. I'm the athletic trainer here. This is my third year. Especially working with the football kids here, I know a lot of them don't even get the basic three meals a day or the nutrition that they're needing. And, and that was kind of a hard thing for me to kind of step into working here. Like, what do you mean you didn't have breakfast or lunch? Or what do you mean you don't have money for food? Has everyone been drinking a ton of water? Yes, kind of not so much. I mean, there are our families who are less fortunate uh, living below the poverty line and the kids are here. Uh, some of them, I guess, don't, I guess, don't have lunches to eat. Who didn't bring a lunch? Raise your hand. <laughs> you got a kid that's not eating, not getting the proper sleep at home, not getting the proper mental well-being and physical well-being at home, and they come to school and they're just trying to keep it together. Set, go, bang. There we go, catch the ball, we drop it, 10 push-ups. Beatty, put two hands on it. So I'm gonna tell the quarterback, hey, can you throw it to me better next time? Meaty, that's not full speed. That's not how I want to get better. That's me going through the motions. And if anybody on this team can't go through the motions, it's you. It's you. The competition is real. They're gonna benefit from raising the competition level. You know what I'm saying? That's when if everybody else is competing and you can't feel solidified like that, that's when you start to get those extra efforts. And then you're like, all right. Exactly. Even though he's not nowhere as good as me, he's yeah. getting more reps than me. Exactly. You start counting your reps and you start taking those reps away. Then they realize, man. Hey, good first job, first baby. Old, good no. job, good job. Sprint through, sprint through. Good job. Because that's what works. When you don't let them that's know who's, who's started. Mm -hmm. right, because once they think they're starting, hey, when you get back to the school, back, school control, they, yeah, yeah, they take off. Head up, head up, Joseph. We don't lean on our feet, but we don't want the person in front of us to think we weak. I know you not weak. I had this is your freshman year. So don't put your head down, all right? That man, even though he go against you, he wants you to be the best you can be. He care about you. He came to me today and said, yo, put me against him. I said, why? Because I want to make him better. One good season, every the whole area is going to buy into it. We went, we went store to store trying to get somebody to sponsor. You know, we'll, we'll set it up for you. And it just wouldn't bite. Once we started winning, now you, you go down there, you got logos all over the place. It's just, that's all it takes, one good season. We just, gotta, we just gotta put that grunt work in, which, I, which we will, which we're doing now. I, lo I love what I'm seeing, gentlemen. Y'all making me proud today. Ready, set, go. Lock it, push, push, push. Push. Right. Uh oh. Let's Where go. Where you going? You got a poop? Yeah. Coach, you don't see that walk? That's how I gotta take a shit walk. Let's go, ready. Go. Base will twist. Base will twist. Two read, two read. Ready? Turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left. We don't look behind us. We only look who's in front of us. And on Saturday, it's going to be three dynamite teams. But you're ready. Fellas, I mean, we, we, we've been hitting, hitting each other for a long time now. Now we have flesh, blood, and the water. We're at a new new spot, but we are alpha out here. Uh -huh. We we are we are the dictators, we are the bullies. Everything uh -huh. that you want to put in one, that's us. Wait go, Marcel! Like if you're an absolute stud, right, 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 yeah, you exactly. can play varsity in the floor. Same here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah we've had one. We, we got one right yeah, now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> we have one right yeah. now. Yeah. Demetrius Russ. You'll see him when you get out there. We won't even tell you who it is. Right. You'll know who it is. You're gonna be like, like what the fuck is that? When it's that many motherfuckers like that, you putting a hand on the body. You ain't trying to split. You getting into that. Check even. Check even. Two three two. You ready? All the coaches for the scrimmage said we're going to get pinned in four or five minutes. At six minutes, you black out. Where you at? Anthony. You black out, and now you can't play football. You had a, you had a choice to make. Look at me. You had a choice to make, and you made the wrong choice. You did the right thing by defending your people. Because I was right with you. I tried to stop you. 
right? But then you kept going and you swung. You didn't have to do that. I know, like, before I was playing football, I was, like, kind of, like, I'm not gonna say, I wasn't no troublemaker, but I'm, like, a, a hothead. I got real bad English, so I was getting into a lot of trouble. Hey! 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 Anthony hasn't had an easy life. Um, things have been difficult for him. The adversity he's had to overcome. My mom had 11 kids, uh, seven girls, and four boys. Like basically, like growing up, like it was so hard for her that like, she had to like divide us, kind of like. She couldn't take care of all of us, so like we were all basically some of us, most of us, were in different places, like with different family members. I think lives with his aunt or somebody. I don't even know if it's his family member. And um, you know, I have his own room. And I, I remember the beginning of the year, and um, I hope he doesn't feel the type of way about this, but it's the truth. He didn't have any food. He didn't show up to one practice. And. You know, I talked to him, I said, what's going on? And the coaches were like, Jamali, you know, you always be, you always babying them. I'm like, I'm not babying them. I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong. And then I came to them and was like, yo, this guy has no food in his house and he's trying to get some money so he can buy some food, so he can sustain, so he can just live. Like, how you expect a kid to come to practice for four hours and uh, with nothing in his stomach? I saw that I was in like the wrong track at first, but he always found a way to like, keep me on the right track, no matter how I may have felt. Working hard, he's got straight A's right now in school, so uh, that's the one thing that's most impressive to me is how he's conducting himself around, around the schoolhouse. I became like a starter. I was starting, like getting value with play time. I'm on my, on my grind in school, I felt like I was doing good. I felt like I was making a difference. I was proving everybody that doubted me wrong. Um, my best friend, who will be here next week, she was the one that kind of introduced us. She and he were a couple. And then she said, you should date this guy, Mike Brown, because he really likes you. And I was like, she's like, he's great. And I said, OK, well, if he's so great, why are you why are you giving him to me? <laughs> so we ended up dating, if that's what you can call it. And um, he rode my school bus home on a half day. And we kissed. So. That's kind of how we met. And then we went to Washington all together. We went all four years. He played arena football. He always wanted to come to a game. And I was always like, no, I'm not coming to your game. <laughs> so he played in Florida for a while, for like three years. They played for Orlando. Um, and then he would say, come to my game. And I'm like, I'm not coming all the way there. So then he started playing for Philadelphia. And at the time I wasn't dating anyone. And I was like, all right, me and my girlfriend who also knows Mike from middle school. She was like, let's just go. Let's go up to Philly. We'll go, it'll be fun. It's his first game of the season. And I was like, all right, fine. So that was the first game I had ever seen him play. I think a leader like um, Mike Brown, you know, they, they can do big things, go far. Our why is y'all. It's our job to create men as fast as possible. It's men before wins. It's your grades before wins. It's responsibility before football. Shit that we didn't get, at least I didn't get. It was football, practice, bye. I mean, we saving lives though. And they don't know it because it ain't been that way for a long time walking through. So I understand, I understand that, especially as a parent, I understand. Michael didn't talk to his dad again. His dad never really had any contact with him from the time he was nine until we were 18. And then he got a phone call that his dad passed away. He knows what it's like to have a single parent and to have all that pressure that the parent has to provide and work and try to be supportive when they're going, you know, playing sports and just try to be everything at all moments. And so it makes him a better coach, I think, for our particular players. And I know tattoos, 6'4", ain't got nothing to eat. Young, hungry boys, mother killers. But where y'all at? Where's my defense? 
flying around. Communicate and make a play. Where my throws at, dog? Throw that thing. This shit don't count. Where you? Killer. In the zone, they need you to be that killer first. If you ain't the killer, none of them gonna kill. When I first saw Mark, I was like, Jesus Christ. Dude is 6'4". Tall. Has a frame to put on more weight. Seeing him throw the ball, I was like, oh my God. You know, this is a freshman. Markel Grant, uh, great talent, uh, one of the top quarterbacks in Montgomery County, uh, great size, um, and he's going to be the guy to lead uh, the Walkersville football program. I mean, I've I watched him play basketball. He's, he can play basketball. I've watched him obviously play football. I, th I still think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the county. I'm back when I coached a week, and Walkersville wasn't a thing until Markel came. Like, like he's, great. he's such a talent, you know, that we had to always know where number eight was going to be. The game plan against Walkersville was always, where's number eight? have a senior quarterback or a good quarterback, especially in high school, you're going to do well. That's the expectation because that's the, obviously the thing that drives football is a quarterback. Obviously, Markel is a very important piece of the puzzle. Obviously, as he's gotten older, his balls have dropped more. He's, you know, he got a little attitude on him. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it happen with the principal, you know? Uh, he's still a very respectful guy. Um, what I can foresee, uh, I can see Ed stepping back in and getting on Markel and Markel being like this. <laughs> Last year coaching varsity basketball here, he actually played for me as a freshman. And I remember having a conversation with him that he was really going to be by himself. And what I meant by that was when you're a six foot five freshman that can throw the ball 65 yards in a row while running, no one else is going to be able to relate to you. No one else is going to be able to understand what's, what, you, what you see and what might potentially be happening to you. Why are you throwing it? As a 14-year-old kid, that's a lot to handle. And so you go from being a freshman with all this potential to now a senior trying to put the team on your back. And he has grown a lot. But I think it's been tough for Mark Peloton. Just like a University of Alabama with a good quarterback, they're not going to let the strong quarterback play in the scrimmage live. Oh, no. All right, it's been it's been different, right? But I, dude, I wouldn't be able to sleep for a year if I said, Markel, you're alive, and you get sacked and blow your fucking. Do you understand? But the hardest thing for an athlete at that age is the amount of people who are in your ear and understanding who are the right ones to trust and whose word you can believe. You got one, you got one quarter score three touchdowns. You understand? Come on, come on. Look at Lucas. Lucas, put the point in the right spot. Ryan. I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. You can see you ain't. We really fought for three minutes. Sal, Amadou, Penn, Demetrius, Caden, Polo. Are you going to do it now? Did you have to start up with somebody? Yeah, I'm taking them off both with size and ability, but his problem is he knows it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, that's the, and he's that's got the a diva sport. type of attitude yeah. about it. It's bad. Like, you can't tell me nothing. I'm the starting quarterback. Nobody's going to take my spot type of a mentality. Best way to describe Markel Grant from my perspective is I'm a fan of his athletic abilities because he's a big, strong, fast, hard-playing kid. I'm not always a fan of his attitude and his leadership abilities. During the defensive walkthrough, I was standing there, and that's when you told him to put his helmet on. Yeah, I'm like, dude. He started bitching at you under his breath. I'm like, dude, five, everybody two. has, and, and the crazy thing, and this is the bad that's part. That's what I told him. I was like, I'm picking on you. It's, it's when I told Demetrius, I said, Demetrius, put your helmet on in practice the other day. He was like, well, Markel, you know, I mean, coach, I'll put my helmet on, but you'll never tell Markel to put his helmet on. I'm like, what? Like, like, and, and it's just like his negative energy feeds off to everybody yeah. else. And it's like, dude, like, I'm, everybody has a helmet on, Markel, doing a walkthrough, put your helmet on. It's like he has an attitude about that. I don't know where it comes from. Like, I like you, dude. I just want you to do, I want you to be the leader that I want you to, that that you can be. But we have to have, I always have to have, a, we have to have a backup plan. Yes. I because agree. It doesn't work. work. Like I said, I'm not going to let this one person yes. sabotage me. Yeah. The, the vital part that I'm going to take responsibility of is I need to talk to his mom because she needs to know how her, her son is acting and responding to all the positive 
opportunities that he's getting, and he's fucking himself. Mm-hmm. He's fuck, but as he fucks himself, he fucks everybody around yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And she she can say whatever she wants, but I would like I said I'm gonna defend y'all. I'm gonna defend this program. I'm gonna defend the kids, and I'm not gonna let one kid dictate. Not no kid dictate the success of others. Yep. We run the jail. Not the motherfucking inmates. Mm-hmm. My mom actually grew up in, in this area. I have like seven aunts. Most of them, I graduated from Walgreens Milk up the street. Uh, so basically like all my life, I lived in the Montgomery Village, Gettysburg area. My dream of life is to become a professional athlete in the NFL. Uh, but for, to, in order to get there, I have to graduate high school and then I have to go into college. In my room, I have like a whole wall with like like le- football letters from like Ohio State, Florida State, uh, Maryland, Syracuse, West Virginia. My child was fine academically, but I think it took him a while to be a leader because he was kind of on the fence about really committing to play for Watkins Mill. So I think it limited him on his progress here. Your attitude was a direct reflection of your play. See, the, the women couldn't tell. Blair won't be able to tell. But everybody in this room knows how you handled your sub yesterday as a supposed leader and the driving force of this football team. Now, I will not let you sabotage our hard work and effort. Yesterday was a sabotage, all right? You're a senior now, you're supposed to be a captain now, and you're supposed to lead. I don't really like communicate with my dad like that. Like He'll try to like reach out and everything. But I would just like push it to the side, just like ignore it. And like when I needed him the most, that's when he wasn't there, so I try to like not really like entertain like communicate with him and I just basically just my mom is my dad so that's just basically it like I don't really have a relationship with my dad we have a lot of kids young black men who high school is a very dangerous time for when we get them through high school and we help them get through high school when they graduate they go on to do great things If they don't get through high school, bad things happen. And it's it's our job to help them succeed, which means let's help them get through high school. Let's talk to them about what they're going through. Let's understand that maybe they'll have down days. Maybe they'll have down weeks. Maybe they might have a down month. But we can't ever give up on somebody when they have that that down time. We've got to love them every day. I actually tell my kids I love them. Sometimes they look at me like I'm crazy, but... They understand if I get mad at them, it's out of love. If I'm happy with them, it's out of love. Um, And I'll say one other thing. I think they teach me way more than I've ever taught them. My job is just to be in their corner. Plays break down, I have like the ability to like escape the pocket, 
make plays, make throws, make runs. It's always been that we've had skilled kids. We've had talent. We got fast kids. We got kids that catch. We can run, throw, and jump. Quarterback Martel Grant, the ball carrier. And we got a flag down on the tackle as he was run out of bounds. But are we smack in your mouth, tough, grimy, and have that grit to really dominate teams and, and beat those tougher teams? And then they come back on that same drive, and then we're going to wrap up. I'm going to do just bust yeah. like that. And yeah. they get that his cheap that ass easy, right? bullshit for They ain't earn it. Yeah. They literally haven't even earned a touchdown yet. Yeah. Coach them up strong, and then immediately positive shit. All right? As soon as you punch Walker's mill in the mouth, they'll fold. Or they're undisciplined. They'll make a mistake somehow. To me, I think that's what other coaches are telling their teams about us. And we win because we were supposed to win. You hear me? Yes, sir. But if you don't, you'll give them the dub. Ten seconds! Oh! 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 When I saw Markel go down, what I was more focused on was upper body. I saw them yank kind of on the back of his collar. I didn't exactly know what all was going on. Um, and it was pretty serious because of the, of the way he was squirming around on the field. Uh, so of course I go out there and do my evaluation and everything is painful, everything hurts, every, you know, numbness, tingling, can't do this, can't do that, tears are rolling. Um, I thought, okay. okay. Oh! Michael, you're telling me. Oh, I can't! 26, that'd be 13. 13. Oh, that'd be 13. Hands on the pain. Is it pain there? Here. Don't hurt me. Oh, da, da, da. Fuck. I mean, the way he was moving, I'm like, he looks like he's bad off. Like his senior year, like I just, like my heart was broke. Right? Yeah. No weight. No, no weight on that foot. Oh, damn you, big boy. Oh, you can no weight on that foot. My mind I was like, you know, F it. Like, we're going to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoever Lucas get, we're going to get Lucas ready. And we're going to figure out ways to win. Like, all this is going fast through my mind. <laughs> And when I got hurt, like the whole team's mood went down. It hit me that I wasn't able to finish my first game of my senior year. That's Rudy Cooney, number one, who took it over for a player touchdown. Simpkins got that one complete. Oh, I'm in the chain, bro. Christopher Watkins scores for the Blazers from eight yards out. And with 7.56 remaining here in tonight's ball game, our score the Blazers, 32, and the Wolverines, 10.